Uh, I do lots of shows with him around town, very funny guy. Welcome to the stage for his first spot in 2014, Mr. Kerry Lee. Good evening, Clay West. Hello. Woo! We're having so much fun! My name is Carrie Lee. I'm not an Asian woman. Just not sure with the lights how well I show up out there, so. Alrighty. So far, so good. Off to a good start. My name is Carrie Lee, and it's my real name. It's not a name I made up. It's the one I was born with, and um, it's caused me no end of grief. My parents, when they wanted to give me a name, I, my dad was the youngest of 13. I have a lot of relatives. My parents originally wanted to call me Jeff. But one of my aunts heard that and called her son Jeff, so they had to find another name for me. So, so they called me Carrie, which they thought was great because for them in their age, in the 60s, Cary Grant was a great actor that was very suave and people would think he was really cool. So to them, the name Cary, image, the image that comes to their mind is a, is a British guy going, Hello, my name is Cary Grant. I hope you want to have sex with me later on. Very suave and cool. Unfortunately for people my age, when I go to school, people hear my name is Cary. It's like, you're a fag! Because you got a girl's name, fag! So it wasn't a cool name. So it didn't exactly give me a lot of self-esteem. So that sucked. Oh. That's when you wanted a comedy show. Oh. It's all right. I made up for it because one of the things about having low self-esteem is that you end up doing things like being somebody else. That's why I became an impressionist because you, you can have different voices, you can have different accents, you can have all sorts of fun. And people say to me, so if you do impressions, what's the first impression you ever did? And the first impression I ever did was when I was a kid, I used to do Yogi Bear impressions. Do you know who that is? Okay, so imagine Yogi Bear, that 60s cartoon, and they made a movie about him in a, a few years ago. And I was worried it was going to be too modern in hip hop, and I would go to the theater and Yogi would say to Boo Boo, Hi Boo Boo Boy! What do you say we go get some picnic baskets? Gee, Yogi, Ranger Smith will be awfully mad. Fuck him, Boo Boo! <laughs> Ranger Smith wants to pull a five and will pop a cap in his ass and bounce. Hey! <laughs> Yellowstone represent! So thankfully they didn't do that, so that was good. Uh, people will say to me, what's the impression you do that people like to hear the most? And I think people like to hear Sean Connery the most because he's the greatest actor in the world, isn't he? Yeah. See, people agree with me. You can't deny that Sean Connery is the greatest actor in the world when you think about the fact that no matter what part he plays in a movie, if he was like a, a Spanish merchant or an Irish cop or a Russian sub-commander, he plays them all with a Scottish accent. And you never question it. You're watching Hunt for Red October. He's the captain on the sub. And he's addressing his men. He's going, It's a great day, comrades. We shall crash and pray and lose him under the heel of our birds. Long live Mother Russia. If I'm a Russian on the sub, I'm going to my young Yorgi and worried about the captain. I'm thinking he's from Scotland. <laughs> Ivan, I'm drunk. You drunk. Everybody drunk, nobody cares. Except for Squeak. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, the thing about doing impressions is that uh, when you do impressions, um, there's things that uh, are stereotypes that people get uh, caught up in, and I hate that. Because there's some voices you do that make people uncomfortable. And it's just because it's ingrained in our heads, and that's not fair. Like, if, for instance, you were going on a plane somewhere, and the pilot comes on to tell you about the flight, and, and his, this is the voice you get. Hello, my name is Captain Abdul Hamal Han Alama. We are flying to Miami. Be very nice, be very warm. We hope you have pleasant flight. Allah <laughs> I love that squeak. It's so cool. Now, the thing is, is that, I mean, he's a great pilot, but it's just that that voice makes you feel uncomfortable because of the things in the stereotyping, 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 stereotyping in your head. There you go. Same as if you were a guy that was called into Revenue Canada and you don't know why you got called in and this is the guy that greets you. Good evening, Ham and Donald. How was the farm? <laughs> Is 
the paperwork you have filed with Revenue Canada is incorrect. It is for this reason we are giving you an audit. <laughs> <laughs> You would like to file for EI? EI, EI, no. <laughs> He's a great guy. He just loves his job. Is that his fault? No. If you're a guy and you're going to have your prostate examined and your regular doctor can't make it and this is the doctor that greets you, oh, hey. I hope you don't mind your regular doctor couldn't make it, but we're going to do just fine. Oh, I know, I know, I know, it's just uncomfortable, but don't worry, I've got a glove, I've got lubricant, it's going to be fine. Obviously, this is not a funny joke, though, okay. <laughs> the other thing about doing impressions is that when I was married, uh, people would say to my wife, wow, it must be really great to be dating someone who does impressions, because then, you know, that's really sexy to have someone else in bed and you're still faithful to your husband. Yeah, except that, you know, I have a pension for cartoons, so instead of getting someone sexy like... You know, Jack Nicholson in bed with her and say, How the fuck are you? Let's go and have some really hot sex right now. I'm so fucking horny. No, instead she gets, Oh, you want to go have sex now? Uh, I'm ready to do it. So, that's why I'm divorced. Um, and I mean, you know, sometimes it's uh, decisions I make like that, that's my fault. Uh, sometimes it's, it's celebrities that make decisions they shouldn't. Like for instance, uh, there's a thing called um, descriptive video. I don't know if you know what that is. If you don't, descriptive video is basically, if you're the kind of person who can't see very well, you can watch a movie or a TV show. Someone will explain what's going on in between all the dialogue so you can keep up with the film. And whenever things like that are used, celebrities feel like they want to help out and they want to do the voice work for that. And can you imagine if you had someone else doing the voice work on a descriptive video and it was someone like Christopher Walken doing the descriptive video for the Transformers movie? That was a guy. He's getting in a car. It's a nice car. It's yellow. Now there's a truck. It's driving towards some. Whoa! Now it's a robot. It's huge. Wow! So's the car. That's intense. Rewind that, I want to see it again. Do it! So, you know, well, maybe you don't think that that's bad. Maybe you don't think that's too bad. If, uh, you know, what if, what if it was a porno and the descriptive video was done by Larry the Cable Guy? Did you see the bodacious Tata Snicker right there? I guess you didn't. I guess that's why I'm describing to you. They are bodacious and squeaky. <laughs> Here comes a fellow with a pizza. She can't pay for it. He's taking his breeches off. Look at the size of that boy's tallywhacker. He's putting a boot stewer. Get her done, son, get her done. He's still doing it. <laughs> Gotta tell you, it's a good thing that's him and not me, because if that was me right now, you'd be watching a 30 second infomercial, then going for pizza, I'll tell you what. <coughs> and squeaking. Uh, sometimes what happens with impressions that really sucks is that uh, I do impressions of people, and I'm not allowed to do the impression anymore because that's someone who's not famous anymore. <laughs> So it's nice that I can do uh, P.B. Herman impressions because he's back in the, in the limelight again. And I'm really happy about that because, you know, he got arrested in a porn theater. And everybody always remembers that. And the thing was, at least he wasn't dressed like P.B. Herman when he did it. But that would be really creepy if you were a cop walking into a theater to arrest someone. And there's a guy in a red suit, or a gray suit and a red bow tie. like, what? I wasn't doing anything. No, it wasn't Mr. Bidding. Ah, oh, come on, you can't arrest me for that. Quit jerking me around. <laughs> I said jerk. <laughs> and that's today's single word. Jerk. Ah! <laughs> Size, you're going to arrest him. You should get that guy over there. He's been bugging me through the whole film. Bless you, you can't arrest me. I just come off a Russian show. 
Besides, I've got a license to jerk off. 007 inches, they call me. And I can talk to not pull it. Besides, I'm going to arrest someone. Arrest those two guys over there. They've been talking through the whole film. Well, listen, I'm not here for the dang film. I'd rather be home with my wife and son watching propane and propane accessory films, I'll tell you what. I'm only here because I'm supporting my neighbor Boomhauer, he's in the film. Tell you on dang on the film, man, on the dang on Bang Ganger 25, man, on the Bukaki Boots, man, you know, boom, you know, full face, man, dang on screen, man. Dang on gooey, man. Dang on kid, man, on ID, man, young, check him, man, on the dang. Uh, we're like a lot of the band here and stuff. Yeah, check it out, we get ourselves a fake ID and everything. Shut up, Beef, let's get us kicked out. No, wait, butthead, check it out on the screen, boobs. It's been like the greatest night of their lives, and that guy's been bucking us all through the film eating popcorn. Well, I'm allowed to eat popcorn in a movie theater. <laughs> or it may be breaking the microwaves a bit over the top. I tell them to yell, you hummer, shut up, Flanders, there's no church. What are you bugging me for? That guy won't take off his hat. I keep telling you it's not a hat, it's my hair, I'm a clown, you idiot. Oh, <laughs> oh it's a clown to do to sit in a porn theater by himself without being bothered. Oh. And what are you blaming me for? The guy in that bathrobe's the obvious pervert. I'm sorry, I thought this was a Jonas Brothers concert. <laughs> I'll head out, but the fellow with the glasses looks lost. You should talk to him. Jesus Christ, no one told me it was a fucking porn when I walked in here. 